I'm having a look at this Howard Light by Honeywell Sync stereo earmuff on the left here. Uh, black, simple design, and 25 decibels of noise reduction rating. Uh, really, I want to see if this is a reasonable substitute or replacement for my previous uh, self assembled, roughly $75 solution with a Go Groove Bluegate Bluetooth dongle with a fairly limited battery life and a proprietary input for um, charging, which I found annoying. You have to definitely make sure you kept track of that charger. So this new Bluetooth toggle I'm going to be trying uh, it uses plain old micro USB. I'm going to go with the same approach though with Velcro to attach the Bluetooth dongle to the head headphones. And we'll see how that goes. This is the leftover Vel Velcro I had. Short length of cable, Bluetooth dongle, and the new headset. So let's get started with unboxing. Looks like I've got a place to stick my thumb here. Get that started without scissors, hopefully. And of course it's tearing a little bit irregularly. I'm not expecting amazing sound quality for music, but for podcasts while mowing or doing noisy tasks with a leaf blower or whatever, this is uh, what I'm hoping for. At a far less costly, as a far less costly option than you know, using something like a Bose out in your lawn when you get dusty and dirty. So the point here is affordability and decent performance. Okay, there we go. Came with the line cord, but it's rather long. That's why I ordered this much shorter one. So I'm going to set that line cord aside. Let's take the headphones out. Okay. So these actually have speakers built in and a line input. Now I'm looking for a flat surface for Velcro, which I'm not finding. So getting the dongle to fasten on there okay might be a challenge. I might not end up using Velcro. I might have to use sticky tape or something. We'll see. I do feel that um, some of the reviewers were saying that the headphones are a little stiff, meaning kind of a lot of pressure on your head. And I can kind of feel that, yeah, it does feel like more pressure than the previous headphones. We'll see how it goes in real use, and in my article will try to cover that. Okay, let's get this opened. Bluetooth 4.0, so the Bluetooth 4.0 should mean low battery usage for the actual Bluetooth connection. Now, it's still putting out an audio line level output, so you know it's still going to use some power, of course, putting out music to the ear earmuffs, headphones. Okay, we also have another line cord, but ridiculously long. Setting that aside. USB charging. Here's the part we really want to get to. Oh, there is no USB charger. So you're going to be charging this from some other source you have lying around. But much bigger capacity than the old. Let me show you. So the weight is more, but that should also give me a lot more battery life. No idea if this thing comes pre-charged at all. And we do have a place to stick Velcro here, so now it's a matter of setting all these parts aside. All we have left now is Velcro, headphones, and a way to get this on. That may look a little ridiculous, but let's, let's have a look here. Could this work? Well, this is rather short. Kind of thinking a better way might be to use a wire tie. Don't know yet. Let's see if we can at least get pairing going here. So I have not read 
a manual. No idea if this is even charged. Let's just give things a try here. Okay, pushing holding the play button. Alternating pattern. So Bluetooth pairing looks like it's likely to be rather straightforward. So let's go to my Bluetooth menu. Here we are in settings on my phone. Link 45 is what it's called. We are now connected. You'll see the blue light stop flashing. So that's good. I'll start uh, playing a little something out of the headphones. And I want to see if I have next and previous track controls that I've been desiring. So that'd be another advantage over my old headphones design. We have sound. Let's see if we can go forward or back. Listening to Windows Weekly. Thirty seconds forward. Ten seconds back. It's working. So I have music controls. I have headphones. Now it's just a matter of wire tie or Velcro or some creative way to attach the two. Let's finish up with a look at the Bluetooth controls for on and off. That Bluetooth light is rather bright. It's kind of oscillating. So I'm going around mowing. That kind of adds to the dork effect. So I think we want to um, push and hold it. Whoops, push and hold this pairing. So I guess I should have tapped it once to turn it on and off. I don't know. There we go. Push and hold it longer. It turned off. Let's try that again. Obviously pairing. The Link 45 just disappeared. Tap it. It does not turn it on. So hold for five. Okay, until the light first comes on. It's blinking and it's connected. So that worked. How about turning off? Tapping it once. Started the music playing. Has a play pause button, so that makes sense. Tap it again to pause. Track forward, track rewind, we already covered. How about turning off? Let's see if I can get that to work the right way. There, five seconds, you hear a tone, light goes off. It's a couple days later, just following up on my video about the headset. Figured a couple things out. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. Okay, and it's paired again, the phone, naturally. And um, we can go ahead and be, have playback going or do whatever we need to do. Um, advance to the next song, go to the last song. All from on the headset immediately behind my head. So if we put this straight connector on the bottom, right angle connector back here, it doesn't actually touch my skull. And I just used plain old Velcro. So this wasn't the flattest surface, but it was two surfaces, here to here. And this didn't really need pivot, because when it's on my head, it's, it's all the way like that anyway. So, this solved it. A semicircular shape of Industrial strength Velcro, put the Bluetooth dongle on there, headset's created. What else did I do? You'll see they're dangling with about a half inch gap here. When you get them out of the box, they'll be pressing against themselves with a lot of pressure. Too much pressure on the head, which you'll see a lot of YouTube commenters making note of. So, what I did was, took my thumbs about an inch from the end and pushed in here, working it on each side slowly until I finally got it to a point where it's got that gap there. Now they actually fit on my head comfortably. Just barely covering my ears. If you have a larger head, these may not be the solution for you. What else will I make note of that I noticed in the last couple days of use? This is a mini USB adapter, unfortunately. Not a micro, which is much more prevalent on smartphones these days. So you will need a cable around for that to charge it. Um, it's really the only drawback, though. Um, I was able to overcome the drawback of a very bright blue uh, LED here. I put a piece of electrical tape on there, made a little hole in it with an X-Acto blade, and now we have a tiny blue dot where the giant um, Bluetooth logo was before, which looked a little ridiculous in the back of your head as you're doing yard work. So that's it. Uh, next, pause, on, off, everything in the middle button. Previous song. 
Uh, no volume control. You still got to do volume from the device in your pocket. But that's okay. It was more important to me to be able to go 30 seconds ahead or 10 seconds back in a podcast, say, when I'm cruising along. The sound on these is definitely much better than my previous solution, which was here. These are by 3M, and you needed a battery in there to do the radio, or you could skip the radio entirely and just use the line level input in this Go Groove solution I had before. Much smaller battery, and no forward and back and no audio controls at all on this. But more important than all that, less bass. So really I could only do some podcasts here with a dorky headset um, antenna. This one actually has halfway decent bass for a $20 headset. I think uh, the plastic here is the most delicate part, so I wouldn't go cranking on this or throwing it onto your lawn. I'm going to wear these fairly carefully and um, hope they don't break, but if they do I'm only replacing the $20 part not the dongle and the cable. So, one other solution I did have a brief look at for about three dollars more was this Impact Sport from the same Howard Light company and that didn't work out well at all. Well it fit better on my head, they're much smaller earmuffs and extremely tinny sound. So aside from the issues of having to use batteries and having to turn it on, um, which is supposed to amplify these mics, really, that's what it's intended for, but it does have audio input. The sound is just incredibly tinny. So I don't really like the idea of having to have batteries and have tinny sound. There's just no advantage to this other than slightly better fit on the head. Um, and less sound muffling too. So really these are an all out winner. Uh, under 60 or 70, I'll put all the parts together. Uh, relatively affordable for all the parts and shipping. And um, decent bass, I can actually listen to music on these. And finally, without pulling the phone out of my pocket, and getting my grubby hands on the phone itself when doing dirty yard work. I can pick a volume that works while I'm mowing, say, and um, hear music and podcast and enjoy either. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and thank you for visiting Tinkertry.com.